Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Mountain Blade Battle. Today we're going to be looking at the companions. Um, more specifically, we're going to be looking at where to find them, and also what they're useful for, and what skills you need to be looking at. So first things first, how do we find companions? When you load up a new game, the first thing you want to do is get yourself some companions, if you don't know this already. Um, you might have played a playthrough before and you might know someone that you really want to use, like has a specific skill set, you know is a decent price, and someone that you just want to find. So first off we're going to cover how do you find your companions, how do you find the ones that you want. It's nice and simple, so obviously the first thing you could do is you could go around to every single town and you could head into the tavern and you could look up here, these are your companions. They're always going to be here up in the tavern, they're always going to be type wanderers, um, so you can find them that way. That's your first way of doing it. The other way, to look more specifically, is if you go ahead into the encyclopedia, so you right click on this guy, you go into the heroes tab, go down here and you just click occupation in the tick wanderer. That's going to give you a list of all of the companions available currently in your game. You can even turn on whether they're dead or alive, because obviously that does help um, a lot. You can also look if you've met them before, um, what culture they are, that doesn't really matter, that doesn't really apply to the wanderers. Um, but yeah, those are all the things you can do. If you want male or female, that's up to you. You can check that as well. So you can go ahead and you can go through all of these guys. Now, one giveaway to their skills, obviously, is their name. Like this guy, the Swordsman. Obviously, we're going to go ahead and assume, and if we click into him here, he's a really good Swordsman. So he's got really good melee abilities there. 200 and 200, so obviously his best skill is a two-handed weapon. He's got good athletics, so he'd be a really, really powerful um, companion to have fighting by your side. Not the best. What you want to look for in companions, really, is someone that can fulfill your clan roles. So we're going to go ahead. I'm just going to run you through. So your clan. When you set up a new game, um, you're going to want to find your companions to help out. But you don't want to just pick anyone. You want to pick specific companions. And the way you do this is if you just head into your party and go onto the roles section down here, we're going to click this and it's going to give us a drop down list. You've got Scout, Engineer, Quartermaster and Surgeon. Pretty self explanatory. So we've got our Scout. Now that's going to be, if you assign someone with a high Scout ability there, what they're going to do for you is they're going to boost the speed of your party. Um, they're going to be able to see enemies at a further distance, they'll speed you up at night and they'll be able to spot hideouts a lot faster, among with other little things which can help you in battles as well. Not massive bonuses, but little bonuses. Um, so yeah, one of the first companions you're going to want to find is a good scout. And that just means, like I said, you can move quicker, spot things that you wouldn't have been able to before and it will provide you some combat boosts as well. The next you've got your engineer, so finding a companion with a high engineering skill will benefit you probably not in the early game, more in the late game, because what that does is that helps you build your siege camps at a much faster rate, um, and it also makes your siege engines and equipment have more hit points, um, they're more efficient, so they're more accurate, they're less likely to get hit, and they'll build at a much quicker rate than what you would do yourself. So that's a good one, not for early game, but definitely for late game. It also will help boost your town projects, um, whichever town you're staying in. Um, right, so your quartermaster, your quartermaster, you want to look for someone with a high stewardship skill, not trade. Um, trade does help, but not as much as a steward. So what a, high, with a person with a high steward ability will do is they will boost your party number. Um, they will reduce the amount of food you need to feed your men and the morale penalties from different types of food. It will also, sorry about that, it will also reduce the wages you have to pay. Not massive amounts, but by enough that can save you a decent chunk of money. Um, it also yeah, massively boosts how much morale you lose and how much you need to maintain your army. So you want some of the high stewardship skill. Obviously, some of the high trade skill is going to help you as well, as well there, but you ideally you'd want to have someone with a high trade skill um, doing other things like leading a caravan, but we'll get into that in a second. And surgeon, obviously, you're going to want to find someone with a high medicine skill. Now, what a surgeon will do for you is it will reduce how many of your men get killed in combat, and it will increase the rate at which you yourself and your men heal. So they'll heal a lot quicker and won't be wounded as much. But more of your men will also get wounded in combat simulations if you have a high um, medicine skill. So like I said, instead of doing all of these things yourself, find those companions using the encyclopedia. So find someone with a high scout, some high engineering, high steward and high medicine and assign them the roles there. Do this as soon as you start your new playthrough. 
because then you you and all your companions can level up together. You can all level up, and obviously if you're getting someone increasing their steward skills or their medicine skills, then later on in the game when you go to create different parties, as you can see here, you can create your parties from your clan members, they will be ten times more efficient than if you just go and find a companion and put him at the head of a party, because you've been building up their party skills. Now these are going to massively help um, just how the parties function, the party size and the quality of troops. Obviously you're going to want to look at other things like tactics, leadership and then, um, what is it, what are the other ones, we've got tactics, leadership, we've got roguery and there's one more, I can't remember what it is, we'll have a look in a second. Um, but yeah, but you can't upgrade their tactics, leadership or roguery um, while they're in your party, they have to be the head of their own. But what you can do for them is increase their scout abilities, increase their um, medicine abilities, increase their steward abilities and that will make them so much more efficient when they go to lead their own parties that they'll be able to boost their leadership tactics all that a lot quicker because they've got massive bonuses coming in from elsewhere. So that's one of the major things that you want to look at first. Um, as soon as you start the game you're allowed to get three companions before you hit clan tier one. When you hit clan tier one you can have a few more so I honestly suggest you get those role members first. Don't worry so much about the engineer unless you're planning on sieging anywhere really early um, but mainly just focus on getting uh, the quartermaster surgeon and the scout and start leveling up as soon as you possibly can. So as you can see we've got, I've got these two here, they're mostly just um, melee companions. We've got one here with some decent leadership skills, um, they've got some decent tactics, so they, they don't all start with very low skills, they might not come up when you look at them in the encyclopedia, but um, they can still have some decent skills on them. So like I said, if we go ahead into here, go into the heroes and go down to the wanderers, um, we're going to look, so scholar, so what the scholar tells us is he's going to have a high intelligence skill, but it's not going to tell us which one. So if we jump into here, it's going to tell us all the information, it's going to tell us where he's at, so he's currently at Cyrenea, so if we head over to there and go into the tavern, we should find this guy there. So he's got high engineering, so if we need an engineer this early on, we know we can go over to Cyrenea and pick him up, which is what we're going to do now. So we're going to head over to there, and I'm just going to show you he is there with his high engineering skill. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll see you in a second. Right, here we go guys, we've arrived at Cyrenea, and we're going to go ahead, head in straight into the uh, tavern here, and there he is. We've got our little scholar here, he's got his high engineering skills, so we can go ahead and bring him into the party. Obviously, like I said, you're not going to want to look for that first, you're going to look for somebody with your um, clan roll skills and then once you've got those three roles filled then you can start looking at getting some people with high melee skills, high archery skills, anything like that, anything that you want it to stick around and help you out or you can start getting some people, look at this guy for example he is probably going to be really expensive so usually the cost of your companions varies from around 500 to about 2000 on really expensive ones, I reckon this guy would be quite expensive because of his skill set He's got massive one-handed and polearm skills, really good throwing, really, really, really good riding. He's got massive tactics and massive leadership skills. So obviously what that tells us is if we take him on, he is going to be a party leader down the line. But we don't want to make him a party leader straight away. So what we could do is we could assign him to be a scout or to be a quartermaster. And although we're going to take some uh, negatives from that and it's going to decrease how many men we can have or how fast we move on the map, but what it will do is it will boost his skill in that tree so that when we want to make him a party leader he's going to have that already boosted skills because they won't be able to appoint their own companions to those roles they'll have to do it themselves so we want to boost that skill for him as much as we can and do as much for him as we possibly can so that when he's going out he's even more efficient than he would be with these skills alone because he's good there don't get me wrong but we could make that even better so we could take him on put him in a clan role and start boosting the skills for him as much as possible. But like I said, he's probably going to be a very, very expensive companion there. So one we ideally want to avoid. Um, especially at the early game, sorry. So not somebody we want to avoid, but somebody we want to keep eyes on, definitely for the future. Now if we go ahead and look in our character, so we've got, basically it splits it up into two sections. You've got your useful melee skills, your formation skills. So you've got your melee skills, your ranged, and your uh, movement skills, and then you've got your smithing. You can find companions with high smithing skills and what that means for you is you can you can actually craft weapons through them. You don't have to do it yourself. So when they're in your um, party, you can go ahead into the smithy and you can select them and then you can craft weapons through them. 
So you can find someone with a high smithy skill um, pretty much early on in the game and start making yourself some really good weapons. Maybe not even to use, maybe you just want to sell them off. You can do that too. And you can also unlock um, very different types of weapon parts for you as well. Um, which is a good way of making some cool weapons. So that one's kind of on its own. That's kind of like the outcast of all of the skill sets. Um, and then we go down here. So we've got our Tactics, Roguery, Leadership and Charm. These are our party leader abilities. So anyone that we want to lead a party, we want to look at these abilities. Their Tactics means that they'll more likely win simulation battles um, against out, like, higher enemies. Um, maybe even higher quality enemies. It means if they're more outnumbered, they have a higher chance of winning. If they outnumber the enemy, they won't take anywhere near as many losses. So you want someone with a high tactic skill. Leadership, um, it means that they can train their own men. So basically what that means is they'll have better quality troops, uh, much, much better quality troops. They'll always have good morale. Um, they will train their troops up. So if they take recruits, they'll passively train them. They don't have to enter combat, which is massively, massively good. Um, it also has a very slight effect on party size as well, but not as much as stewardship. Roguery, again, it just provides some kind of morale boosts, a little bit of XP boosts. Um, it's kind of like all round general boosts to little things, combat, charm, it kind of does a little bit of everything, but it's a very good skill set to have, um, especially for a party leader. So a lot of, I found a lot more people have the roguery skill tree um, quite upgraded compared to others, so it is a good one to get in um, to have. Very good one to have. And Charm is obviously probably the lesser one that you want to look for, but it does still help. It will give them um, boosts to their own personal experience and it will help them basically boost your relationship with nobles in the map. So wherever your companion goes, if he has a massively high Charm skill, then wherever he goes, he will boost your relationship with any nobles in that area. It's completely random, but it just means if they head, say, into the city that we're currently in, if one of our companions went into here, there's a very slim chance that he could boost our relationships randomly just by socialising with the nobles there. So we don't even have to be with him. It's more beneficial to give someone um, who says they have a high trade skill and you've made them in charge of a caravan. If they've got high charm, they will boost the relationships with all the nobles in all of the towns that they visit to sell their goods. So charm is a really, really good one for building up your relationships with everyone around the map. Um, it's better off to have someone in your party with a high charm skill but you want to send them out. You want to make sure that they're doing their own thing, either as a caravan or as a party or as a governor. If they're a governor, they'll boost the relationships with the nearby villages and the towns that they're in. Unfortunately, no boost to castles because there's no notables in the castle, but they will boost the, your relationships with the people around them. Um, so yeah, probably better off in a um, caravan or as a party for sure. And then obviously your steward, that's going to boost your um, morale it's going to boost your party size and it's going to decrease the wages you have to pay. Medicine, again, help heal wounded soldiers, reduce how many men are going to die in combat and make it more likely that they'll get wounded. Engineering, obviously, um, siege camps, siege engines and town projects. Trade, again, really self-explanatory. If you're not building up your own um, trade, find someone with a high trade skill and make them in charge of a caravan. They will make you massive amounts of money. So that's pretty much all the skills guys, I've shown you how to find them, I've shown you where to find them, um, I've shown you what you want to look for early on in the game, which is obviously your roles, you want to fill them up and start leveling up your people as much as possible. Now there is no real quick way to level your companions up, um, if you haven't assigned them to a role then they won't level up those skills, the only skills you can level up I really are in combat, so if you just keep attacking looters or parties, caravans, they'll level up their skills that way, but they won't upgrade any of their intelligence or social skills unless you assign them to a role. So that's what you want to do ideally. Um, I hope this has helped guys. If I haven't answered any of your questions on this, if I've missed anything at all, let me know down in the comments below. If you've got any suggestions, questions, anything like that, get down in the comments below. Or alternatively, um, head into the description, join me on Discord and message me privately or in the server. It doesn't matter which, if you've got anything you want to say there as well. Make sure you go ahead and do that. Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification button so you can keep up to date with all the content that's coming out. We're going to have loads more guides coming out on Mountain Blade. I'm going to explain how to do loads of different things. And um, we've also got the main playthrough going as well, which I might already answer some of your questions in that too. Um, so yeah, make sure you go and check that out. Make sure you go check out the other videos on the channel too. Um, I hope this is up, guys. I really do. Make sure you get at me if you've got any questions, anything like that. And um, yeah, I'll see you in the next one, guys. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.